Customer Experience Show. And I'm so excited because on this show, I have the person who has started me on the road to customer service and sales, Jeffrey Gidomer. He's my first ever mentor. I saw him live in Charlotte, North Carolina in 1999, and I was riveted on the chair. I couldn't even move. And you know me, I move all the time because of Jeffrey. So Jeffrey, welcome to the show. It's good to have you Thank here. Thank you very much. I totally appreciate your kind words, however true they may be. Um, the most important part of teaching is not simply transferring information, <clears throat> but transferring information that people can resonate with and use and live with. It becomes part of your daily life. I totally and agree. I devoted myself to that. Yes, and uh, it's very true. Uh, I pivoted my life since I met you. I moved from the family business to start my own business. It took many years. I remember asking you, Jeffrey, what should I do? You said, Michael, it's easy and it's difficult. And I asked you, what's easy? And you said, study two hours on your chosen topic every day for 10 years. In five years, you'll be recognized in your country and in 10 years worldwide. And then you asked me, which is your country, son? And I said, Cyprus. And you said, what? And I said, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I asked you what's difficult and you said Michael you have to have consistency will you be able to do it for 10 years in a row so I've done it for 10 years in a row it took a little bit more but I'm so honored and happy to host you here and speak to you after 21 years it's our pleasure it's my pleasure actually um, I uh, today you know because of COVID countries a little bit locked down here in America uh, we're still not roaming around the streets the way we used to. Uh, yesterday, my my football team won, so I have to talk about it, even though it was a pretty crappy game. Uh, we ended up winning. So, well, we we ended up not losing. That's a way to not describe it. And uh, you know, your business is very appropriate right now because service will play a role in. People will remember how they were treated during this time. And that's going to reflect in, will I do business with you when we move forward into a new way of doing business? Right now, everyone's scared. Everyone's looking for answers. Everyone has their own issues. Some people have had a death in the family and some people have run out of toilet paper. And you have to know which one is which. Yes. Very true. Very true. So uh, let me ask you the first question because we have many questions will, that will come from our fans and uh, uh, I skip the introduction and everything. Uh, you have a lot of fans here in Cyprus and worldwide because we have a followership worldwide. So the first question is, you wrote a book titled Customer Satisfaction is Worthless, Customer Loyalty is Priceless. And we know Correct. that loyalty doesn't only stem from sales it mainly stems from customer experience customer service can you go back to your early years in your career and tell us what prompted you to start serving people with your seminars with your knowledge what was it that got you going i feel that the first sale michael is the easiest from that point on service takes over and that's going to determine the second sale. If service is no good in the middle, I'm going to find somebody else because there's always somebody else. And depending upon what you say and how you treat that customer, they're going to say one of five things about you behind your back. They're going to say something great, something good, nothing, something bad or something real bad you choose you choose exactly what it is and people just don't they don't understand that um it, it's unbelievable to me how easy it is to lose a customer you know i i tell people all the time they're in the sales prevention department because of the way they treat the customer. Okay. So since you talked about the way uh, salespeople might treat the customer, what's the impact of a salesperson on the customer experience of any given company? 
Well, there's two kinds. There's face-to-face -face and there's faceless. So now many people have an internet service department where they're trying to respond to your tweets or they're trying to respond to their uh, circumstances and they usually do it in a very ineffective way. They apologize. Well, we're very sorry that that happened. I don't care if you're sorry. What are you going to do about it? So recovery. We're in the key. mask era now. We're in the mask era. So I walk into our, my daughter, my favorite bakery, and we want to get a couple of donuts. And the lady goes, where's your mask? Not hello. Not thank you for your business. Not did you bring your money with you? Where's your credit card? anything no where's your mask and i said well we were just leaving thank you excellent reply i think my friend okay, so stavros will fall in love with you i have a friend that uh, he adheres to the same principles and uh, that's what he's been telling me right so i, I tweeted out to them yeah. that it costs no extra money to be friendly it costs no extra money to be money. friendly and once people understand that they can go about their business. But if you greet me in a matter of fact way, in an unfriendly way, I'm going to go find someone who's nice. Yes. It's just as easy to be nice. Excellent. I understand what you're saying. Jeffrey, let me tell you that when you were out in the Atlantic Ocean, overlooking the Atlantic Ocean, your connection was much better than inside the house. I'm just letting you know we, there is a problem with the connection. Uh, All right, let me know this. Yes, try the Ethernet. Maybe that will help a lot. Well, I'm on the Internet, but I'm going to try uh, going to. Greetings from Larnaca. So excited for this episode. Pandelis Fuli. Stathis Stasis is saying hello. Cristal uh, Lacazara, good evening, Michael and Jeffrey. Happy to be here. Savas Kutsuras. Uh, Maro Vasiliou says hello. So, Jeffrey, are you on? Maybe that wasn't a good idea to try that. Huh? <laughs> Sophia, can we connect Jeffrey back? Hi, I think um, I think he's just changing the connection. So maybe okay. in the meantime, say if okay. Let me, let me, let me, let me. Yeah, sometimes it's not what you say; it's how you say it, right? Georgina Ibrahim, you're totally correct. That's a great comment, Jeffrey. You're back. I I went to a hardwire. Hardwire, and we can see the difference. Now you look your age, 54. Thanks. Very You're good. 21. <laughs> so, Jeffrey, next question. In this COVID and post-COVID era, how do you see sales changing? Well, it's going to be different once this is over. The world has become used to doing business like you and I are doing right now. Online, on video. Um, it's going to be a virtual and video world. Used to video used to be an option. It's no longer an option. I can I can do millions of dollars worth of business and never leave my home if I greet the right person. But the challenge is can you do it innovatively? Can you do it in a way, for example, that I am wanting to uh, meet you, but I can't meet you face to face? but I can send you a coffee mug and I can send you some coffee and I can meet you for coffee. Amazing. Amazing. It's, it's, just so, simple. it's so simple. Yeah. And wherever you are in the world, some people have Keurig, some people don't have Keurig, but everyone has an espresso machine. And so you, you send them their favorite one. You send them, you know, some, some coffee or some, or some, uh, some, some uh you know one use things and now they're having their favorite coffee with you and but this is important michael they're going to tell somebody yeah, i just ahead. had coffee with jeffrey he sent me a coffee mug and some coffee and so so what does that cost and the answer is it doesn't matter the 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 answer is what is its value true one person telling another person and that's where we're going to we're going to live in a virtual world now way more than ever before. 
All right. I totally understood. Jeffrey, do you remember back in Charlotte in 1999 what you gave us as a present, or shall I remind you? Remind me. You brought uh, a bin with your uh, with all your leaflets, and you said, since you're going to throw it in the bin, you might as well use my bin with my name on Jeffrey Gidomer. <laughs> so, yeah. so you gave us a bin, and then you gave us a calculator. And the calculator yeah. said, we help you up your profits. And when we pressed on the calculator, the calculator turned, stood on its own and says, up yours. Up yours, I know. Yes. I so, know. Jeffrey, you are always a giver. I try so, my best. Um, it's, I use humor all the time because humor is memorable. And humor will allow you to relax. And, and humor is is the basis of communication. So I I, I use humor first. It's and true. that way people feel good and they feel open and they're comfortable and you become approachable. When you start formally, you're not approachable. Excellent. Um, I, <laughs> uh, I told you earlier that I, I lived in Berlin for a while and it's very formal in Germany, very, very formal. And I had a friend who owned a, a gift shop uh, and a card shop. And people would come in and they say, I want a, I want a birthday card. And the woman would say, funny or normal? And that defined their society. Like funny was abnormal. No, 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 no. <laughs> alles in Butter, alles nicht in Butter. Exactly. So, uh, uh, very good. And uh, humor stems from being uh, witty and smart. And uh, that's a prerequisite, I think. Exactly. Uh, so, Jeffrey, the question is the following. I see a lot of professionals panicking now and dropping their prices uh, because of COVID, because their business might be going down. So my question to you is, how can a professional, what should a professional do in order to preserve their margins and keep their prices? What's your advice, your expert advice? If you have a quality product, it will always sell. When you lower your price, it shows that you're desperate. I get emails and it says, this is our lowest price ever. I delete that email. If I don't need you, I'm not going to buy from you. So this is what I'm recommending. It is now time for any company to be proactive in reaching out to customers to help them, not to sell them. People need help. People need answers. They don't need a sales presentation. They don't need a slides. They don't need any of, this, of the things that would happen one year ago. They want to know what's going to happen moving forward. And I'm going to remember the person who helped me, not the person who sold me. Excellent. People love to buy. Huh? They don't like to be exactly. sold. <laughs> but exactly. the, the mantra is for this next 12 months, help customers win. Help customers win because many of them are in pretty bad shape. Noted, noted. And coming from the king of sales, that's uh, that's amazing. It's the killer, king of customer experience and the king of caring. Exactly. You hardly answered my last question, but let me ask it. Maybe you want to expand on something. We have a few members, and a lot of members from the audience are from the service sector, and they have been negatively affected as a result of COVID. Do you have any advice on how to sustain their businesses during these difficult times? And as I repeat, you partly answer this. Well, I have a book. It's the little gold book of Yes Attitude. People need to go online every day and reinforce their own belief system in themselves. It starts with the person, not with the customer. It starts with who you are as an individual. And if you're not happy about who you are, you're never going to be happy trying to serve other people. You have to be proud of what you do. I, when, when I, I go to France every year, I stay in a nice hotel. In every hotel, they have housemen. It's the houseman's job to run the floor 
floor, which for give all the housekeepers their stuff and whatever. So I needed more towels. And I go to the door where the houseman is. And the first thing he says is, welcome to my floor. He doesn't right. own the place. He's an employee. But his pride of service is what wins. And so if you're in a service business right now, take pride in what you do and serve for yourself first and your customers second. Amazing tips. Amazing. Wow. Impressive. Uh, there isn't any other question from my side, but let me ask you, how come, what, what makes you, where do you find all this vitality? You're 74 years old. You were born in February, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes, you don't look the part, but where do you find all this vitality? And tell us your secrets behind what you eat, what you drink, and how you okay. go about it, Jeffrey. Well, I, every day, I take CBD oil. The, the guy likes me so much, he's created a product for me called Sales Boost. Wow. <laughs> I'll send you the information. You can get it out to your listeners. Thank you very um, much. I will appreciate it. CBD is very good for you because it's natural. Yes. Everything yes. I do is natural. I don't do anything that will harm me in any way. Um, I go to sleep late. I wake up early every day. And when I wake up in the morning, I do five things. Right. I read, I write, I prepare, and that helps me to think and create. I've been doing those five things for 25 years, every day, seven days a week. And lately, I'm, if, if anyone is following me, wants to, wants to see me tomorrow morning, I'm on Facebook Live every morning, 9.59 a.m., 10 o'clock in the morning, New York time. So wherever you are in the world, and, and Michael, it's unbelievable. Every morning, about a thousand people show up from every place. Japan, Singapore, Australia, Serbia, Greece, every part of Europe, South America, Brazil, everywhere. I know, everywhere. Jeffrey, because I show up as well. <laughs> oh, 9.59 a.m. New York time every day. I've been doing it now for 225 straight days since COVID started. Yes, and my and goal is simply to help salespeople. If I help them win, I win. Consistency, again, is key, Andreas Potamidis. And Andreas Potamidis has said something else. Jeffrey Gidomer is a legend. So much value coming in. My email inbox from Mr. Gidomer. And uh, this live is great. Thank you. Thank you, Andreas. Sophia, can we go to our questions, please, from the audience? Yes, we have one question from Yanis Papayanis, and he is asking, um, now with the COVID, he has to do a lot of Zoom WebEx meetings, but a lot of his customers are reluctant to show their face. So how can you keep the personal touch while you are communicating in this manner? I have a contest for the ugliest person to show up on camera. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, listen, just, I go live every day. I go on camera every day. I do it because I'm comfortable. If they're not comfortable, it may be that their internet connection is not fast enough. It may be that they're not comfortable with their knowledge. It may be that they're not comfortable with their surroundings. All kinds of things have to be present. And you have to be gentle enough to ask someone why they are reluctant to go on. And the best thing to do is have a short, like five minute conversation where they try it. Remember the food you didn't like and you now love? True. At some point you have to have tried it. That's very true. Very I never ate mushrooms until I was 33 years old. I went over to a friend's house and he said, do you want mushrooms? I go, no, I don't like mushrooms. He goes, what? He said, well, just try these. And I'm like, wow, these are great. And I've been eating them ever since. So it's a matter of becoming comfortable with it. Now, I'm going to give a lifelong tip, a lifetime tip for somebody. Have you ever been in a restaurant 
and the manager of the restaurant comes over and says, how is everything? And you say, fine, it's fine. When someone comes over and asks me, how is everything? I said, what do you care? <laughs> well, what do you mean? I said, well, do really care if everything is lousy? So I said, just sit down at my table. I'm going to share with you what you should have said. Come over to my table and be specific. Say, Jeffrey, what was the best thing about this meal? And I would have said, well, it's it's the vegetables. They're, they're unbelievable. Vegetables, let me write that down. Jeffrey, what's one thing that was missing from this meal? What do you wish was here? Oh, I, I wish I would have had that Greek dressing, sweet and sour. Greek dressing, let me write that down. You know, in, um, in America, they have Greek olives, but in, in Greece, they just call them olives because you're already in Greece. <laughs> you understand that, right? Okay. Yes. So, dressing, let me write that down. Now, I said, how many people do you see every day? She said, probably about 25 people. I said, so at the end of the day, you'll have 25 answers of what was the best thing what was missing? Minimal. At the right. So let's say you get a hundred things a week. That's five thousand things a year. What was the best and what's missing? You now are a marketing department, first-hand marketing department. You could sell that information to the CEO of your company. Very true. Very and true. Find out what was the best thing. Find out what's missing. Be specific, find out what's the best thing, and exactly. do make a note because it gets people to open up and speak more and elaborate more. Not only that, when the waiter comes over to my table, she could say to me, the, uh, he could say to me, would you like to know what the top 500 things are about this restaurant before you order? I go, yeah, I would. Let me give you the survey that I've been taking. But they, they don't, don't do know. that. They, they don't, don't do it. They don't do that. So people Excellent. don't understand how to serve. People don't understand what to do in a service position because they're too corporate and they're too um, stiff. You know, you know what I'm talking about? They're, they don't want to go outside of the boundaries of where it's safe. I want to have fun. I want to have a good time. Jeffrey, we're getting amazing comments. So simple, it's mind blowing. He's talking cool. about you and your ideas. <laughs> Nikos Kalikas, Therapon Fakas from Greece says, Wow, amazing tips. Joanna Christophe, while she's driving back home, she says, Best productive time while driving back home. Stefanos Constantinou, excellent tips. Cool, uh, I see them. They're cool. You, you see them. Guys, if anyone wants to send a question in, feel free. I have, sorry to interrupt, I have a question that came before and I think it's really interesting to answer. It's uh, from, and excuse me if I don't pronounce your name correct, Diari Nur Eluda. And um, he is or she is looking to start a business. And the question is how to know if we are ready to deal with customers? Uh, there's only one way to find out. Start talking to people. Um, if your mother said, don't talk to strangers, you have to ignore your mother. You have to talk to everybody, everybody that you come in contact with and smile at them so that they will talk to you and smile back. Most of the time, people don't smile enough and I'm, I'm, I don't want to talk to that person. Very I want people to look at me in the eye and smile at me and talk to me in a way that I feel good. So you don't, if you wait until you're ready to start your business, don't start. Just go when you feel you're not ready, but be friendly and talk to everybody. Talk to people. They will love you. Amazing. Amazing. Amazing advice. Uh, Sophia, do we have time okay. for any more questions? We are reaching the end of uh, our time together and I'll let you to wrap up. Okay. okay thank you I very want much to say one that. other thing. Please. I spent a lot of time traveling in Switzerland. And this is for Sophia. Um, if you get cheese fondue, I'm a big cheese fondue person, biggest in the world. Every restaurant 
has their own bread. Yeah. They have, they make it their own special way. And you take it with a fork and you dip it in the cheese and you eat it, but there's no two breads are alike. And so you can differentiate yourself with something as simple as bread. Exactly. Don't tell me that you're just like everybody else. It's, it's, that's not true. Your bread is better. We have the best bread in the world because the cheese is the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> and Jeff actually, they differentiate also with their cheese. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will let you wrap thank up. Thank you. Uh, Jeffrey, anything else you want to say before I wrap up? No, I, I want the world to be healthy. I want the world to be happy. I don't want you to feel as though you're being locked down. I want you to look at this as an opportunity that you can emerge any way you want to. It's going to be a different world in another couple of months. Do something that you love. Find something, follow your heart. Michael did. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, guys, just to wrap it up, uh, Jeffrey was amazing. That's why we get uh, uh, messages saying that he should come back to the show. Once again, we will organize something soon. Uh, mm -hmm. This is experience, this is passion, this is knowledge speaking. I remember 21 years ago, I went up to Jeffrey, I bought his two books, The Sales Bible and Customer Satisfaction is Worthless, Customer Loyalty is Priceless. I thanked him. I also bought his cassettes, not DVDs, not CDs, but cassettes. I was listening to it in my car. The first cassette on the left-hand corner, as you see it, it was my favorite one, 101.5 Rules for Success. And as I was visiting customers, I used to cry in the car listening to it. The 101.5 rule was my favorite. And it said, you're given a bucket of water and a bucket of cement. You can either build a stepping stone towards success or a stumbling block, but the choice is yours. And if you want to build a stepping stone towards success, make it personal. It's my floor. Care about your customers to be specific, to ask what did they like about their dinner or about their lunch and what can be improved. Make it face-to-face, -face, not faceless. And above all, remember that you need to help and serve, not sell. Jeffrey, it was an honor and a pleasure having you on the show, speaking to you after 21 years. And I thank you very much for doing us the honor. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much. Help you, everyone. Take good care. Bye-bye.